Hey everybody, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we're going to talk about Unreal Engine. It's not something I've covered on this channel before, but I wanted to go through kind of the process that I found to get your models imported in Unreal, set up with your textures, and just kind of get you ready to roll. This tutorial is going to be based on a model that's coming out of Substance Painter or Maya. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about these workflows and how you're doing them. Generally, the workflow that we're going to follow is a very standardized workflow, which is an FBX out of Maya into Substance Painter, out of Substance Painter into Unreal. And so that same sort of kind of workflow can be followed through any other 3D app that can export in FBX. So you won't be totally lost if you don't have those other applications, but this is a really good way to get your models in, organized and working inside of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so assuming you've already installed Unreal and you've kind of gotten everything set up, you should be presented with this window, which is your kind of opening recent projects window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go down to games and we'll just hit a blank and hit create. All right, so now that you're in Unreal, this is your blank scene. This is kind of uh, one of your defaults. I don't generally use this scene. This is kind of more for like setting up an initial project and then working with like game assets and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to file. We're gonna do new level and just do a basic. This will be a good place to get started just because we have some lights in the scene. We can set everything up. We can move our model in here and we can get our texture set up. So. How do you import your model? Well, if you go up here, you'll notice there's really no way to like actually import your stuff. So Unreal is a little bit different because it has what's called the content drawer. So if you go down here to your content drawer, open it up, you have this just empty space. So this is where we're going to be importing all of our assets into Unreal Engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work off of my BD1 model since I've kind of already worked with him in Unreal and I've already pulled him in. So we're gonna go ahead and go to import and then I'm just gonna browse down to where I have my BD1 stored. And then we're gonna hit open. So it's gonna go through and do its processing that it needs to do with the file, and then we're gonna get an options menu that we're gonna change some things in. Okay, so once we get our little option window here, we're gonna scroll down and change a couple things. So we know that with BD1, we're working with UDIMS. If you guys have seen any other videos on my channel, you know that BD1 was built initially with UDIMS, so that's the same workflow we're gonna follow. So we're gonna kind of set this up properly, and then we're gonna enable Unreal Engine to use the virtual texture mapping. So if we scroll down, one of the most important things we need to do is we're going to combine static meshes. This is really useful if you're importing a model that has a lot of pieces. So BD1 is built up of a lot of different pieces. So we're going to be importing him as a static mesh. Then later down the road, you can set it up for rigging and do all the other stuff you need to do with it. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's checked. You're gonna make sure your materials are checked to import your materials. And then from here, we're just gonna hit import. We can see now that in our little content drawer that we have our materials imported and our geometry. So if we drag this guy in here, we zoom in, we can see that we have a BD1 model in here. So we can do ER, do R to scale, pull him up and we have BD1. So overall the process for getting him in here is pretty self-explanatory, but we need to set it up for UDIMS because we haven't actually used UDIMS in this Unreal scene, so we need to get those configured. So you're gonna go to your settings, Project settings. And then in here, type in virtual. You should see enable virtual texture support down here if you scroll down a little bit. You need to turn that on. This is gonna make you un this is gonna make you reboot Unreal. So you want to make sure you save your project as well. So we'll close that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file, save current level as BD-1, save, and then restart now. Go ahead and hit save selected and reboot. And you can see that loads us into a world that wasn't ours. So this is one of the things that I think is kind of confusing about Unreal Engine, but we can just go up here, go to open level. You can see our one level that we just saved. We can pull in and then we're right back to where we were. Okay, so we have virtual textures enabled. How do we get our materials into the scene? How do we set BD1 up with his materials? So the beautiful thing about this is you can see that he's got a bunch of wild colors. These are the same color IDs that we set up in Maya. So when we pull them into Substance Painter for texturing, we can then pull them into Unreal Engine and use them to map our new materials back. So from here, we're gonna go to our content drawer. And then what we wanna do is we wanna start setting up folders. So initially what I'll do is I'll set up a folder per material. So for instance, let's go and look at head components. So we're gonna go right click, new folder, head underscore components. We can just do comp underscore MAT. You don't have to follow that naming convention. This is just generally what I do. So we'll go in here. We're gonna go import. And I know where my textures are stored, so we're gonna go ahead and import our textures here. 
So from here, we're going to look for our head components. I'm going to select these. Select them all. Technically, you only need to select the first one in the UV tile workflow, but I just select them all because Unreal can figure it out anyway. So we're going to import. You're going to get all these. We'll just hit yes. Apply to all. It's going to import those materials, and you can see that those textures are now here and imported. So how do we get those applied? So we'll go back to our content. And we're going to go to content drawer. We're going to go to head components. And then here we have our materials. So the first thing is we're going to grab this guy and delete it. We don't want that. Next, we need to go to our content drawer. So we need to change something here. We need to actually go in here and set up the raw texture files. So when you export some data from Substance Painter, some of that, that data is read in a raw format. Otherwise, the application itself tries to color correct it and it screws up the result. Generally, we know our metallic and our roughness are ones that need to be converted. So what we'll do, we will, right, we will click both of those, right click, go to Asset Actions, go to Edit, Selection, and Property Matrix. And then in here, we're gonna uncheck sRGB. Close that. Oh, no, that's all. We can close that tab. And then that's done. So let's go ahead and grab our textures here. Drag them here. And one way you can tell that your virtual texture is working and it's being used that way is if you look in here, you can see this little VT down here. That means it's using your UDM tiles. So from here, simple as simple enough, we'll just grab these, hover over these to see which one we're working with. We know this is the roughness channel, so we'll just drag this into our roughness channel. Uh, this guy should be our normal, so we'll drag this into our normal channel. And let's see. And this guy is, this should be our base color. Pop that there. And metallic. And then if you're using it, it misses it. Add it just in case. Now, you'll notice that we don't really have a way to add height. Unreal Engine handles height very differently, so it's not something we're going to cover in this tutorial. Um, there will be a later tutorial once I do a little bit more workflow with it and figure it out myself. But for now, you're leaving your height out. So if you're looking to work just with your normal map, that's totally fine. But if you're looking to use a height map, it goes along with doing things like parallax occlusion as well as potentially setting up things like Nanite. And it's a lot more than I wanted to cover in this tutorial, so we'll do something later on with that. But for now, this is how you get your base material set up. So we've got that set up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit save. We're gonna close that. All right, and you can see just after that, we have our first materials kind of added to this thing. So let's just go ahead and add kind of a bigger set of materials because we know we can see it that better. So we'll do the tan body parts. So we'll just go to new folder, tan body Bad. so we'll do the same workflow we're going to go in here and import we have a lot more maps here to deal with so let's go ahead and import those same process and it's a good idea when you're going throughout this after you import your textures each time is just go ahead and just save them um, you can organize these however you want to you really don't have to organize them the same way I do. This is just kind of the way that I found works for me best. Um, and then same thing. We're going to go click our roughness and our metallic. Right click, asset actions, property matrix, and we're going to turn sRGB off. We'll close that tab. Content drawer, go back to content, body parts, and then we're going to do the same stuff. So we'll do content, tan body. We know that's our base color. You know that's our emissive. Again, this model doesn't really use emissive, but I'll plug the material in anyway, just in case I ever have to change anything with it. Uh, we're not going to touch our height map. We are going to pull in our metallic. And our normal. And last but not least, our roughness. Okay, same thing. Save. Close. All right, and so you can see now we have our material applied it's in here. And it's working. 
one of the things that I come across a lot, and it's something that you may or may not experience, especially when you're using UDIMs. If you come across where your textures are being skewed or they're kind of like crackly, you're gonna need to turn off Nanite. So if you imported your mesh with Nanite configured, I can show you how to fix that real quick. We can go to content, you can double click your mesh. It's gonna open up the mesh preview area. Your mesh is gonna be at scale in here, so moving around maybe a little bit different. But from here, you can scroll down. You can see this enable Nanite support. You'll wanna turn that off. So if you're getting a lot of distortion with your textures, turn that off, unless it's super required for your scene, in which case you're gonna to have to do a lot of kind of finagling to get that to work without distorting your textures. But in the, most, in the general sense, you're probably just gonna be pulling your model in here to work with it to render it out if you're doing some of the stuff that I do. If you're doing this for a game, it's gonna be a little bit different, but that enable Nanite support is what you're gonna to wanna to uncheck because for some reason it really tends to distort the textures uh, with models with UDIMs. So I generally will just leave that off. BD1, I don't have that problem with him, so I just leave it on. Now, the beautiful thing is, is that because you're working off of the same model, which is using the same material sets, if you wanna import BD1 again, we can just drag in another BD1, hit R, scale him up and he's gonna keep all of the materials that are assigned to him. So you're basically setting up your model to be just a usable asset within Unreal Engine. So no matter what you do, once it's configured, you can drag that model into any scene, you can throw it up, you can throw some lights on it, you can do some rendering, uh, and that's kinda how you can just work with it and go about it. So for importing the rest of these textures, you would follow the same exact process for every single part, get it all organized and cleaned up and ready to go. And then from there, you can start playing with your lighting and stuff. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, that's generally the process that I follow to get my models into Unreal Engine so I can start rendering them and getting them out. But um, there also may be a better way to do it. So if you know a better way, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And if this video helped you, make sure you've already liked and subscribed because it helps the channel and you'll learn more as we go about our tutorials in Unreal Engine, Maya, Substance Painter, and a myriad of other applications. And of course, if you found this video helpful and you think other people can learn from it, make sure you share it. That helps a lot too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you for being here and I will see you in the next video.